suspect that my sister speakers are slightly jealous because you've got more time with me now, right? <laughs> They're loving and supporting. Are we good? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready for me? Yeah. Okay. Because we have to be, we have to ensure that you can hear me well. Yes. So let me start with this. This is my conscious revolution. Don't define my black identity. Don't define my feminism. Don't define my politics. This is why I resist. Don't define me. If you ask me what my most prominent feature is, the color of my skin would not come to mind. Not because I'm not proud of it, but because it is not and it should not be my most prominent feature. But yet I live in a world where the color of my skin is used to define me, describe me, set boundaries on who I am meant to be, what I am, judge what I say, and even cast aspersions on my character. This is the 21st century and racism is another form of slavery, but just without visible chains. The black identity has long been marginalized, dehumanized, commoditized, to feed a narrative of white supremacy and white privilege. But let me tell you this, that the prejudice and bias against black people is also done by non-black ethnic minorities. Yes, I said it, and if it makes you feel uncomfortable, oh well. <laughs> but that is why it is time for the miseducation of the female black identity to be deconstructed. And we can deconstruct it with these few home truths. Don't you dare call me an angry black woman because I am justifiably angry, biologically female, and yes, of African descent. Don't you dare call me aggressive, bully, dominant, because I am visible, have the cause of my conviction, unequivocally and unapologetically vocal, and I, and I can assertively defend my opinion. Don't you dare undermine my brilliance and excellence because of your irrational fear of me and the unfathomable inferiority complex of your false superiority. As I've grown older, I know I don't look it, but yeah. <laughs> As I've grown older, I have chosen to use that narrative to challenge the user. So where the purpose is to silence me, I do the opposite and I'm more vocal. Where the purpose is to cast aspersions on my character, oh, no, 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 no. I refuse to cower, but instead, I assertively stand my ground. And where the purpose is to diminish my ability, I dig in and let my skills, the product of my work and my passion speak for me. This is why I resist. Now, let me tell you this, that the negative stereotype, prejudice, bias, discrimination, call it what you like, it is an insidious camouflage to demean, dehumanize, and silence us. It is an attempt to take away our power of opinion, power of expression, power of authenticity. Everything seems to be for grabs. Everything about us seems to be called for judgment. Even our hair, you get the, mm, it's not very professional. Or you get the, it's not very tidy, ooh, ooh, or get this one. <laughs> it's just too versatile. You change your hair too much. Are you paying for it? <laughs> <laughs> but by attacking our ethnic hairstyles, you are messing with our black identity. This is why I resist. Or is it our way of expression? People, I'm Nigerian. I not only speak with my voice, but my body is an entire language of expression in itself. <laughs> so if you can't handle my expression or my opinion, stay the heck out of my lane. <laughs> it's really very simple. Because I am not about to conform. I am not about to turn my hair into something that fits your Eurocentric sense of beauty because the African beauty is solid. <laughs> And if you do not know me, let me introduce myself. I am African. I've got the blood of royalty flowing in my veins. I'm a woman. What you see in me, there's more than what you see. Because I am fearless, warrior, queen. I'm a child of God. This light, you cannot begin to comprehend. And what you can't comprehend, you seek to contain. And what you can't contain, you seek to condemn. This is why I resist. Woo! Woo! 
And then, of course, we go into all forms of authenticity. Ha! Look, I don't easily get offended when people can't pronounce my name. You know what I mean? Whether it's my first name, Shola, or my surname, Moshogbamimu, right? But at least they try. At least try, right? But those who seek to disrespect it, who say, mm, get this, well, it's not convenient. It's a bit difficult. My name isn't difficult. If you can't read my name, you're an illiterate. If you can't pronounce my name, you're downright lazy. <laughs> but when you disrespect my name, you are messing with my black identity. Say my name. <laughs> You have to understand that when you say an African name, you have to say it with the right attitude. <laughs> People, because African names have character, power, and personality, just like its owner. <laughs> and you have to understand this, that by not saying our names, it is a visible exclusion. It might come across as subtle, but whether it is at work, in schools, in our communities, the problem there is by pronouncing everybody else's name and you just go, and we have our legal counsel, Shola. Really? Like I don't have a family with a family name just because you don't think it's convenient enough to say it? So sometimes I've resorted to helping them out. I go, say my name, say my name. <laughs> Say my shock, my beam, who you know shall last around you. Come on. Say my name, say my name. You know shall last around you. Say my shock, my beam, <laughs> Look, I am proud of my name. I am proud of my authenticity, of my way of expression. I am I'm proud of my opinion. There is no two me in this world. You might find another shola, but it will not be me. And the same applies to every other black woman. Give us the respect we are due. This is why I resist. Feminism. Oh, I love feminism. I love the sisterhood of feminism. I love the way that it unifies us as women from different backgrounds, creed, faith, ability, disability. That feminism for me is about celebrating women, right? And I'm so honored and proud to call sisters, amongst my sisters, white, black, brown women who I can stand with in solidarity, strength, and sisterhood. But ha, feminism is not so intersectional. Oh, we talk the talk of intersectionality, but we do not practice what we preach. I can already hear go, oh, but surely, surely, feminists are intersectional. Really? Are you intersectional? Feminism also white? Are you intersectional? Feminism not so Muslim? Are you intersectional? Feminism not for trans? I'm sorry, how intersectional are you? That's why I salute the black feminists. Kimberly Crenshaw, who coined the term intersectionality to reflect the multiple inequalities faced by marginalized groups, particularly black women. It goes to show that when you treat inequalities as mutually exclusive, what you end up doing is you're enforcing discrete forms of oppressions that are enabled by each inequality. If we take that analogy and apply it to the multiple representations that each one of us in this room embodies, you will see that if you start to recognize that you are intersectional, just who you are, that you are intersectional, and I recognize that actually I am intersectional, I'm black, I'm a woman, I'm metrosexual, I'm Christian, and I kind of think of all the things that have, the experiences that help shape who I am, and you think the same. Do you know what's going to happen? We will find what is common between us. And then at the same time, we will identify what's different. But by identifying what's different, we start to celebrate it. Because you see, you want me to accept you and celebrate your difference. And for me to be able to do that, you will start to celebrate my difference. Do you see where I'm going with this? Feminism should be intersectional. Because feminism is not just a declaration, it's a demonstration. Feminism is not just a claim, it's a manifestation of who we are and our life you know, styles and choices. And let me go as far to say this. The term feminist is gender neutral, okay? 
Are you listening to me? Don't say Atishola doesn't teach you anything. <laughs> the term feminist is gender neutral, so yes, men can be feminist too. Oh. Please. Yeah. They are our allies, our brothers, our husbands, They're our friends, our cousins. There are some of them who actually get it. Let them be. So I want to say that for me, in this feminist movement, feminism should not just be about getting equal outcomes and opportunities in comparison to men. Feminism should also be about freedom from the prejudice, bias, and oppression within the women's movement. Women, let's stop judging each other, okay, and accept each other as we are. Let's not bring our latent prejudice and bias into the very thing that is meant to make lives far better for us. Let us be different. This is why I resist. Ha, politics. Oh, politics. I don't know about you, but the politics today does not represent me. It does not. The politics of division, the religion of hate, the complicity through silence that enables far-right populism and far-left ideology. This is not my politics. This is why I resist. This is why I say that you and I can shape politics today through active citizenship. That through active citizenship, you and I can ensure that the old politics and politicians are no longer recycled. We can ensure that there's no more resurrection of these old structural reforms that are steeped in patriarchy and inequality. We can start together to build new foundations that break away from those structural reforms that choke us. Because yes, my brothers and sisters, the laws, policies, processes, and procedures in place today that are meant to enable fairness, equality, they are meant to ensure independent, well, financial and economic independence for all, those are the very things that are suffocating us. This is why I resist. It is time to be visible. Get to the front of the march, literally and figuratively. Become and exercise the power that you are. We often think that government is the power. I'm here to educate you, okay? Government cannot possibly be the power because we are the government. Not those elected officials, we put them in there. We, the people, are the shareholders of this country. Those elected officials, they work for us. That's why they're called public servants. <laughs> But we have to take responsibility on how we shape politics through our voice, our values, and our votes. Because if you truly do not want your integrity to be compromised, if you truly do not want the wrong form of representation, then you have to stop being complicit through silence. You have to stop the lazy media consumption. We have to do so much more then just wait for things to happen or make it somebody else's problem. Because if you don't start to see that politics affects the food on your table, clothes on your back, and the roof over your heads, brothers and sisters, then you're part of the problem. If you say, well, well, there, it's okay, the politician only said the little fib, it's a lie. <laughs> There's no other way to describe it. A fib is a lie, and untruth is a lie. It is a lie. Don't tolerate it. Don't let us, we should not continue to allow division. Because that division, even if you don't feel it applies to you today, it will apply to you tomorrow. Understand that. If you see somebody attacking your Muslim sister, and you say anything because, well, you're not Muslim and really isn't, it's not your problem, I promise you tomorrow it will be your problem. And if you don't start to have somebody else's back, who's going to have your back? We have to be the change and representation we want to see through active citizenship. This is why I resist. Because my politics, my politics says if one of us falls, then all of us fall. But if we stand united, then we can never be divided. Are you ready to do something about it? Because I'm not here to just talk at you, which I can't, but that's not the point. 
Are you ready to do something about it? What are you going to do about it? What is it that triggers you? What is it that provokes you to act? Because that is what activism is about. Simply something that makes you do something different. Are you ready for a revolution? Yes. Yes. Oh no, I'm sorry. This ear wasn't listening properly. Are you ready for a revolution? Yes. Are you ready to do something different? Yes. yes. Are you ready to provoke change in your lives? Yes. Are you ready to say no to compromise? Yes. Then give me a beat. Come on. Let me hear you. Let me hear you. Louder. Come on. Uh huh. Say after me. I, I am, am a revolution. A revolution. A revolution. A revolution. Say, I, I, I am, am a revolution. A revolution. a revolution. Okay, hold up, hold up. Because some of you are being so proper. Like, oh my God, this is so not what we expected. This is like TEDx. You know what? This is my spot. Get the heck up. Everybody stand up now. Come on. And if you behave yourselves, I might just let you sit back down. Give me a beat. Come on. Uh. Come on. I... I am a revolution. A revolution. A revolution. I say what? Am a revolution. Come on, do it some attitude, people. Come on, come on. I I am a revolution. A revolution. A revolution. I, I am, am a revolution. 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 This is my conscious revolution. Thank you.